Hey guys, it's Amory, the anti-HR HR lady. And today I need all my non-black people of color to come to the front of the room. I am noticing very often when I do discovery calls with people of color, and when I say people of color, I am not talking about black people. I am not talking about white people. I am talking about people who are non-white, but also non-black. So I'm talking about my Asian brother and sisters, my Latino and Latina brothers and sisters, and those that fall in between that gap. So you're not black, but you're also not white. And trust me, white people have made their determination that you're not white, even if in your mind you think you are. So, you know, some of my Middle Eastern brothers and sisters may fall into this category as well. I have found that when I do discovery calls with individuals and employees who are non-Black people of color, that they often have a really hard time articulating discrimination. They will often fill out their intake form and I'll ask the question, do you believe you're being subjected to discrimination in your workplace? And they will tell me no. But then they will describe work environment and situations that are very clearly discriminatory, but they have a really hard time saying, I'm in fact being treated in a manner that is discriminatory. And so what I wanna say to you guys is discrimination does not just happen to black people at work. It happens to just about any person in the workplace, okay? And so it is okay to face the reality. It's painful reality. Because a lot of people who come into the United States, especially um, those of us like me who are first generation Americans, those who come in um, as immigrants, feel a very special loyalty to America and they don't want to ever you know, accuse their workplace of doing anything illegal or wrong. But then they find that there are things that are happening to them at work that are unfair and very clearly are being treated differently and, and being negatively treated differently, but they just don't want to call it what it is. And I often have to spend a lot of time getting to help people see that it's okay to call this thing what it is. It's okay to call the thing the thing. And I never try to put words into people's mouths. I just ask them questions. And then I will ask them, do you, know, do you feel that this might be discrimination based on what you've described? This person's treating you differently. They are singling you out. They're targeting you. And they're not doing this to anyone else in the workplace that looks, you know, doesn't look like you or isn't you, right? So especially when they're the only person on the team, it's really hard for them to say, I'm being treated differently in my workplace and I believe it's happening to me because I am Latina or because I am Asian or because I am Eurasian or Indian or Middle Eastern or whatever. And so I just wanna say to you all, like I always say, white proximity will not save you. And even though you may not be black and some of you may even look down your noses at black people and come into the workplace and think that you are better, you are not. And eventually the things that occur in your workplace will show you that you're not, whether you want to admit to seeing those things and facing those things or not, right? Coming to me on a discovery call is a great first step. I don't want any employee to allow their employer to treat them badly. I don't care what color you are, whether you are black, whether you are you know, Asian, whether you are Latino, whether you are, you know, Middle Eastern, whether it's because of your religion, whether it's because you're trans, I will help anyone that comes to me for help. But I do find that individuals who are non-Black people of color have the hardest time coming to terms on discovery calls with the reality that they too are being subjected to discrimination in their workplace. They often don't have a hard time admitting to me that the workplace is hostile and that the workplace is toxic, but they have a hard time saying it's because I'm Latino or it's because I'm Latina or it's because I'm of Asian descent or it's because I'm, I'm Muslim and I wear hijab to work or these kinds of things. And so I just want you to understand that discrimination doesn't only happen to black people, right? And discrimination is not just being treated badly. Employees and your manager can treat you badly. They don't have to like you. So every employer of every employee of every color can get treated badly in workplace. Where discrimination comes in is why they're treating you that way and whether they're treating you that way on the basis of a protected class or protected characteristic that you might have. And so it's important to understand what those characteristics are and I have explained them lots and lots of times in videos. They include race and ethnicity, gender, age, um 
nation, uh, you know, place of origin, religion, um, ability, uh, uh, sexual orientation, um, all of those are protected characteristics, right? So if you feel that you are being mistreated in your workplace on the basis of any of those things and you're being treated differently because of any of those things, right? Then you have a claim to raise in your um, workplace with HR about your treatment. And so, you know, when you have a manager that is behaving in certain ways towards you and you notice that they're not treating other people in the workplace who don't look like you in that way, you may be experiencing discrimination, even though that may not be what you want to believe it to be, or you don't want to call it that, right? And it doesn't just apply to, you know, a white manager. If you're an Asian person or a Latina person or a person with a disability, and you're in a workplace and your supervisor is black, but they're treating you differently, and then they're treating other people who look like them differently than the way they treat you, and they're mistreating you and not mistreating them, that's discrimination too. And I would love to say that that doesn't happen, but in fact does. So it's very important for all of us to recognize that discrimination comes in all kinds of varieties and perpetrators of discrimination can look in all kinds of ways. And so you not only focus on the who, but you focus on the what and the why. And so to my non-black people of color, I just want you to understand that discrimination happens to you too and that you have a right to call it what it is when it occurs. So I hope this video is helpful to someone who watches it, and I hope it helps more of you recognize it for what it is, call it what it is, and, and demand accountability from your workplace if they are allowing that to happen to you in your workplace. It's not just about hostile, toxic work environment, but most importantly, it's about discriminatory hostile, toxic work environments. And you have a right to recognize when that happens. You have a responsibility to recognize when it happens and to call it out. So I appreciate those of you who have reached out to me and have come to me. And I'm always happy to help people get to where they need to go. But I have definitely noticed a trend in that most of the individuals who come to me who are non-Black people of color have a harder time saying out loud, this thing is happening to me because of my identity, right? And so I just want you to know it's okay to make that admission. This is Anne-Marie, the anti-HR HR lady. HR is not your enemy, but they're definitely not your friend. I am. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.